Hey YouTube, your favorite YouTuber here, Ian Perez 48 is here. Welcome back to another episode of Racing Topics with Ian Perez. This is the 41st episode of this series, and today I'm going to be talking about the 2021 Daytona Road Course weekend that was held over the weekend not too long ago. And you guys know how I am when it comes to stock car road course racing. I always looking, I always look forward to road course races, especially the Daytona Road Course. It's a dream come true that NASCAR is racing at the Daytona Road Course, and I'm very happy that it took place once again. And of course, I was very excited to have that happen. Very unfortunate that um, Auto Club Speedway is not on the schedule right now. Originally, it was supposed to be the third race of the season, and Homestead was supposed to be the second race of the season. Unfortunately, COVID. But, but I'm very happy that the Daytona Road Course came back again. And what is there to say about the weekend? Some goods, some negatives, and some controversies, let's just say. So with that being said, without wasting any more time, let's begin. So I want to start talking about the Truck Series. So on Friday night, the Truck Series um, ran their second race at the Daytona Road Course, second race of the season, and and honestly, that race was honestly the worst road course stock car race I've ever seen so far. Like, it started off pretty fine and all that, like... When the track was wet and rain tires were being used, I thought that was a pretty good race. Yeah, there was some chaos and all that, but I thought it wasn't too bad. But, unfortunately, that race was, it was just the worst. The amount of caution, the amount of stupidity there was, like, I don't know what, I don't know words, I don't know, like, words can describe how bad that race was the race was just a caution fest it, it reminded me of the 2020 Pocono truck race worst race of last year but the Daytona World Course of the trucks it was not good it was not good and, and also the inconsistency of the, and fuck I can't speak and the inconsistency of the yellows as well at times because you know how NASCAR is but I don't know the race was just not Good. It was a it was an instant turnoff when it became like a crash fest, spin fest, stall fest, whatever. It was it was awful. And no, I'm not just saying it because Ben Rhodes won at Daytona. By the way, Austin Jopper Ben Rhodes was sweeping Daytona. I'll give him credit for that. I'll give I'll give credit to that to Ben Rhodes. But the race is awful. It was a caution fest. It was a right fest. Hell, even like. Like, it was like 20 laps under yellow. Like, according to Racing Reference, it was like 10 cautions for 20 caution laps. And I know, like, I don't know how, I know uh, there was like green-white checkers three times at the truck race, but I don't remember, like, how many laps that was actually ran. But half the race was ran with yellow, under yellow, and it was just an instant turnoff with the amount of caution fest there was. An instant turnoff. Worst race of the weekend, easily. So, I got that negativity out of the way for trucks. Let's move on to the positivity. The Xfinity Series. What is there to say about the Xfinity Series? Personally, that has been the best series to watch since 2017, in my opinion. And it just gets better and better. Like, I'm, I'm excited for the Xfinity Series. Like... Of course, I said I, I. Of course, I said I'm not gonna watch a lot of races or a full season. But for Xfinity, I'm pretty much gonna watch the full season of Xfinity because that series is awesome. And once again, it was an awesome race for the Xfinity series. Um, it started off early with a typical Austin Cindric and AJ Allmendinger battle, because they're the best road courses, of road course racers in the series right now. And we all thought it was going to go down between Cindric and Amadinger. But unfortunately, coming into the end of stage one, 
AJ Allmendinger tried to block Cindric, and AJ screwed himself, got into the grass, and of course the splitters doing its stupidity. Why do we have these splitters? It's just gonna cause more damage. If that never happens, AJ will still be fine. Maybe contend for wins. I don't know, but so yeah. And Riley Herbs being Riley Herbs. I know he was trying to avoid a rug, but he could have went to the outside. I know it was like last second decision, but that was still stupid for Riley Herbs to go into the grass and fuck himself. But hey, that's Riley Herbs. Oh, those poor Stuart Haas racing teams. But anyway, so my only pro my problem with whatever happened at the end of stage one, again, just like uh, the B300, stage racing and their gimmicks because these drivers are going for points that don't really mean anything coming into the chase because the elimination format is stupid and garbage points don't mean anything like y'all can collect every single stage win points until phoenix and you still get and you still don't win a championship so that's my problem stage racing's stupid they're they're fighting for points that don't really mean anything throughout the entire season. It doesn't really mean anything. And the fact that we saw shit like that again, that's a joke. But hey, NASCAR's all for entertainment with their stupid gimmicks that play show seeker fans. Speaking of which, we will get to that later. So, pretty much the only complaint about the, the Xfinity race. Um, stage 2. Ty... Gibbs, where did he come from? I know he did some strategy. Like, I, I believe he stayed out. I'm not really sure. But whatever strategy he pulled, wow. Ty Gibbs did so good in stage two and won the second stage. Honestly, all right, all right, all right, hold on. Who here, who here thought Ty Gibbs was going to win a race? Personally, I did not. I didn't know Ty Gibbs was going to win. You see what I love about the Xfinity Series? It's so unpredictable. Not only because the racing is fantastic, but it's unpredictable. If any of you actually predicted Ty Gibbs to win that race, you're a lucky son of a gun. You're lucky. Wow. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Ty Gibbs did good in stage two. Um, final stage. There were a lot of drivers trying to win the race. Ty Gibbs, Daniel Hamrick, Austin Sindrick, Mayat Snyder. Um... I know there was a five-car battle at one point for the lead and for the win. Oh, man. There were, there were so many good battles for the lead and any positions. The racing was just, as always, sexy. Unfortunately, a caution came out for uh, the 48 James, uh, James Buford. Something happened to him. But that was not the green-white. I don't believe that was the green-white checkered. Uh, restart. I believe it was Bailey Curry in the 74 who had a tire down. Um, and then that caused yellow. And then we went green white checkered. And oh boy, the Daytona Rokers restart. So oh boy. <sighs> it was just too much. So as soon as I saw Ryan Sieg and other drivers went off in turn one, I had instant flashbacks. Of that one restart back in August with the Mike Harmon cars. Oh, so yeah, there was a reason why I said, oh, it happened again or something on a reaction video. And then, of course, chaos happened. Oh, my God, it was a, it was a crash fest. And Josh Williams hit the tire barrier. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's just, honestly, like, the race was so good, and honestly, after that, I was like, oh, shit, don't let this be the truck race again. Yeah, I know the race was already better than the truck race, but I don't want the same ending to be like the truck race. That, the truck, the truck race was embarrassing. And I don't want that to happen in the Xfinity Series. Um, anyway, so the final attempt, um, the final green white checkered happened. Ty freaking Gibbs. Did a almost did the pass in the grass because he went to the grass, but didn't pass anybody. I thought he did the pass in the grass, but he didn't. But he almost did the pass in the grass coming into turn one. 
trying to run away and get away from Austin Cindric and going after the cars with all their tires. That's amazing. Ty Gibbs drove like a freaking veteran out there. And y'all can say whatever you want about Ty Gibbs being grandpa's money. I don't care. Because what he showed on track on Saturday, oh my God, that's just talent. He does have talent. And of course, Riley Harris would never. And before I talk about Ty Gibbs again, there was another crash at the restart at the infield. And poor Noah Gregson, he was last, he was like three laps down after having issues. He could have gotten the top 10 finish, but unfortunately he was part of the crash. So Noah Gregson fans, I'm sorry that you went to that hell that day. Y'all, uh, Gregson was so close to the top 10. That could have been like a good finish for Gregson. Uh, but somehow there was, there was no caution. All right, all right. I guess like there was like cars not on a racing at, at the track activity, at uh, the racing surface, whatever. So yeah, they kept the green. And Austin Cindric, with no right front fender, after the damage he had with AJ, tried to get Ty Gibbs. Remember, Ty Gibbs made his first start with no practice, with no qualifying, unfortunately, at a road course. And he held off a driver who is one of the best road races out there in stock cars. A road racing specialist who, with a lot of road racing experience. Uh, I think I'm messing up a bit. And he held Cindric off and Ty Gibbs won his first Xfinity win in his debut. That's amazing. And after that Daytona road course win, Ty Gibbs will be doing 14 more races in the 54 this year. Like, I know this kid is better than some people thought and extremely better than Riley Herbs. But I'm a bit concerned about how he'll do with the other races. What he, did, what he proved at the Daytona road course shows that he does have talent, but I really hope like he doesn't mess up at other races. But other than that, I wish Ty Gibbs nothing but the best. And, and a good 14 more races and all that stuff. So, of course, the best race of the weekend. Easily, once again, the Xfinity Series. Man, I need to say more about that series. I think I said enough about that series. It was an awesome race. Some flaws, but hey, it was still a good race. I don't expect every race to be perfect. So, after the Xfinity race, we move on. To the Cup Series. And honestly, I think, like, it was a good race. Like, it was a good race. Don't get me wrong. I, stage one was pretty decent. It was good, but, like, there were some issues. Like, a bunch of dri- There's, like, four drivers having right front tire downs because they had... Because they were locking up a bunch of times. They had tire downs. Matthew Bandero had a right rear tire down, and it was not from locking up the track. So, yeah. So, the flaw was, like, having a bunch of cars, having a bunch of drivers blowing their tires. But, besides that, I thought it was a decent, I thought it was a pretty clean green. Not bad of the first stage. Of course, Chase Elliott won the first stage. The best road racer in the Cup Series as of now. Looking for his fifth straight road course points paying win. And then stages two. Once again, not too bad. Clean green. I believe so. Again, just let you guys know, I'm not the best race reviewer, so cut me some slack. Stage two was pretty decent. And of course, unfortunately, Ross Chastain crashed. I believe Ryan Blaney accidentally got into Chastain coming into the, the first banking at Daytona. So yeah, that was pain. I really hope Ross does better uh, this season. I mean, he had a top 10 out of the 500, so... I guess he's not the best road racer in the Cup Series right now. He can do good in road courses. Like, remember the... Remember x last year? But, hey, he'll learn. And then, I believe Danny Hamlin won the second stage. Nah, fuck, I don't care about the stages. I don't remember. It was a clean green stage, too. 
Um, and then the final stage. Everybody thought we were going to see another clean green. Good racing to finish. But man, there was a lot going on. Kurt Busch going off track. Kozlowski spending a bunch of times. Like, Jesus Christ. And then there, and then the controversial moment of the weekend is the rain. So there was like a small rain with like, um, I forgot how long ago, like somewhere in the 20s. I don't know. And then that threw out the yellow. And what's controversial is that a lot of fans are saying, hey, it wasn't raining that bad. They're just doing this for entertainment. And it's just both sides of the story, of course. And honestly, I can see like what NASCAR did. Typical NASCAR was do more of the entertainment stuff. Like NASCAR, the race has been good. I don't know why you got to keep making it look prettier with the BS. I don't know. It's NASCAR. They they can't be a, a pure motorsports for shit. Literally the one of the only pure things in NASCAR at this point is real course racing. One of them. I'm not saying only. Anyway. So yeah. And what happens was that why can't NASCAR just let teams decide if they go for slicks or wets? I think it should be up to the teams, not, not NASCAR. And then because of NASCAR's pleasing entertainment, they want to entertain and put up a stupid show. We got a lot of chaos, a lot of carnage. Pretty much the biggest flaw of the cup race was NASCAR putting up another BS show just for entertainment. And we get a lot of stupid chaos. And just... I don't know. What is there to say about this? Unfortunately, Chase Elliott... Um, had some issues. Well, not issues. But like... He did not win because... Of the stock up... Coming into the banking with Kozlowski. Hamlin. And all that stuff. And Elliott got spun out. And just to let you guys know... It was not intentional. Of course not. They were just stacking up. Yeah, it was on Kozlowski. I don't know. But let's just say NASCAR was inconsistent with the yellows late in the going. And, yeah. It's just stupid chaos just for entertainment. Anyway, before I keep mumbling like an idiot, I'll go on with the race. So... Coming into the last laps, Joey Logano was leading. And Christopher Bell, he was like fourth. And the battle came down between who had the better tires to win the race. Logano had older tires. But I believe Bell's tires were not that old. Honestly, I thought he was going to lose the race because of the, because he did have a tire rub. I don't know. I thought Logano was going to get it because I, I, don't, I didn't think Bell was going to get it. I didn't think Bell was going to catch him. But he did. And then Cup gets to the white flag when Bell was close to him. Tried to get around Logano. Logano kept blocking. I'm surprised Joey did not wreck himself again. We all know how Logano is. I get it. You're defending your position. You're trying to win the race. That's racing. But damn, he almost wrecked himself. And then Christopher Bell got around Logano. Coming into the white flag. And then Christopher Bell... Wins his first cup race at the Daytona Road Course. And honestly, he's been one of my drivers since um, the 2017 Kansas Xfinity Race. Remember that race? Like, I knew the kid was talented. And honestly, that race, when he, had, when he was battling with Jones, when Eric Jones hit the wall and then Bell got into Jones and then he hit the wall. And then the fact that Bell won that race, I'm like, oh, he's one of my favorite drivers now. Because he was just that damn awesome. That shows his talent. And of course, it wasn't a surprise that Bell was going to do better than Jones in the 20. But anyway, one of my favorite drivers, Christopher Bell, wins his first cup race in his 38th start. And I didn't expect it to be on a road course. 
Did anyone else expect it to be on a road course? I didn't. But, hey, that's the magic of Daytona and road course racing, baby. It's amazing. <sighs> and I want to, and that was an awesome race. That was a good race with a bunch of flaws. But the blame is on NASCAR. And I want to talk about Bubba Wallace. Of course, you got NASCAR fans and stupid crybaby Bubba haters uh, bashing on Bubba, saying, oh, he sucks. I told you he sucks. Here's the thing. Um, in the 500, he was going to go for a top 10 finish, but he had a vibration. It was part of the last lap crash. Not a fault of his own. He couldn't avoid the crash, I guess. And then at the Daytona Road Course, he's had some issues. He had some damage, and he was at the back for most of the race. And then with a bunch of cautions at the at the last laps, the final stage, he had a chance for a top 10, but he dropped back. And then on the closing laps before the race was over, Bubba wasn't 13th. He could have gotten the top 15 finish. That could have been a good finish for him after the day. He had until some mishap happened. Like, I don't know if he spun or lost. Or didn't get into turn one. I don't know. But. He could have gotten a good. He could have gotten a decent finish. 13th but. Nope. But here's the thing. Bubba Wallace is not a terrible driver. I know he's a decent driver. And I know he can do better. But. Looks like. Road course racing is not his cup of tea. That's pretty much his weakness right now. And also. Let me remind you that Bubba is in a learning curve of driving for a top tier cup equipment. He's got Joe Gibbs equipment. And I believe, and I could tell he's on a learning curve with that. Because remember when he was in Richard Petty Motorsports, um, he was in midfield equipment. He did the best he can do uh, with that team. And no, he did not crush a lot, so shut the fuck up with that bullshit. Um... He did, he did improve his average finishes in Richard Petty Motorsports. Yeah, go to Racing Reference. If y'all don't believe me, go to Racing Reference. I'm tired of the unnecessary hate. But I can tell that Bubba is trying to do better, but just some mishaps and unluckiness happen. So he's in a learning curve with top-tier cup equipment. Like, let him learn. Let him learn. He's doing his best. So that's my little, not rant, but like my little, I don't know, discussion about Bubba. I'm just tired of the unnecessary hate from Bubba. He's doing the best he can. So yeah. Of course, I don't expect Bubba to like, oh, win rates is left and right, or right away. Like, it's a learning curve. That's always going to happen. I know he's better than other mediocre drivers. But like, literally... I really hope he continues. I really hope Bubble does well. I really hope he succeeds. I really hope he proves the haters wrong. Next race is Homestead. Let's see how he does over there. See if he's. If he is like better. Or like other races like 750 horsepower package. The skilled ones. So yeah. I'm still holding my breath about Bubba. No, that's tough. I know he can do better. I know he can do better. He hasn't ran uh, top tier equipment since KBM in trucks. And I don't know if the 99 truck uh, was top tier or midfield or not winning equipment when he won Michigan 2017. I'm not really sure. But I know he can do better. I have faith in him. And I'm not like going to jump to conclusions being like, oh, he's good. Oh, he's bad. No, I'm literally focusing on how he performs, how he does. That's what I did to everybody. But I've never been very nervous to a driver see how they do before Baba. And I'm not like nervous because, oh, oh, he's going to fail. No, I'm nervous because I want him to prove that he's actually a good cup driver. I want him to prove the haters wrong. That is all. And it's hard to have faith in him because you know how the Nasser fans are. They're fucking awful. 
Anyway, so yeah, wasn't meant to be for Buffalo. He's not the best road racer, I could tell, but yeah. Anyway, so the weekend, so the Daytona Road Course weekend, honestly, it was a good weekend. It was a good re- weekend. It was a fun weekend, except for trucks. And uh, I'm very excited for more road course races. I really hope they add some more road course races in the future. Personally, to make a perfect schedule in NASCAR is more short tra- uh, more road courses, more short tracks, and less big tracks. That's how it should be. That, it, it, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what a perfect schedule looks like to me. My opinion. So what do you guys think about the 2021 Daytona Road Course Weekend? Did you guys like it? Did you guys not like it? What was your favorite race? What was your least favorite race? And all that stuff. I'm just happy that one of my favorite drivers, Christopher Bell, gets his first one in the Cup Series. Ty Gibbs, he shocked. He shocked a lot of people, including me. So, yeah. So, yeah, this weekend was full of surprises as well. <laughs> All right. So, next race, we get a homestead only for Xfinity and Cup. And, of course, Xfinity is going to do better without a doubt. Actually, for Cup, last year's Cup race um, at Homestead, it wasn't that bad. For a shitty package, I thought that race is not bad. Pretty solid. Homestead's a unique track. And still a skilled track, I believe. No matter what package it is. And, of course, Homestead is my home track. Of course, I watch those. And, yeah. So, that's going to do it. I'm pretty bad at these reviews. Why do I do it? Because I love to talk about motorsports. That's why. I'm not trying to be, like, like some wannabe reporter. Like, I'm just a motorsports fan talking about racing. That is all. That is the purpose of this series and the purpose of this channel. So with that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know like I suck at this, but hey, I do my best. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's video. I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. Comment like, and su- comment, like, and subscribe for more content. Follow my social media accounts. Don't forget to turn on my YouTube notifications for more content. Thank you all so much for supporting E Nation. This is Ian Press 48. Signing off and have yourselves a good day. Goodbye, everybody.